So, Seb, over to you again. <laughs> what, what would be your kind of take on a discourse analysis of the image here? Okay, if I were to try and do a discourse analysis um, on this particular image, first thing I would point towards is that we don't see the actual tsunami itself. We see the aftermath. We don't see the destruction of, of property. We don't see the destruction of a landscape, but we see dead human beings. But also particular types of human beings. We see children. We don't see dead adults. At least I can't see that here. We don't see it's, it's dead children that we're seeing. And interesting enough, there's one group we don't see at all, and that's men, adult men. It's only a woman in here, the only person that's actually alive in the picture itself. It's perhaps, you know, constructing as the woman, as the victim, as the helpless, as someone who is in need of help in here. Yeah, that's right. It's actually, as you pointed out, we're, we're actually getting a particular type of representation of the tsunami, and it's and it's one that's that's quite typical. Um, in fact, as you again, as you pointed out, it's a highly gendered image. In that, we see the the, the distress of of a of a mother and a woman, and it's at the of course at the death of children. Um, and throughout history, mother and child images. Um, have been uh, seen as uh, very common depictions of non-Western and developing world disaster. Um, so in this image, we really, or we see that it, it taps into uh, stereotypical perceptions of, um, in this case, in non-Western sense of need and helplessness. We see uh, a distressed mother and um, dead children which uh, gives off a sense of powerlessness um, of, the, of a woman devoid of agency. Um, but in doing that, in, in presenting the tsunami in that way, we're really um, obtaining or getting a very singular representation of the tsunami's catastrophe and devastation, and also of the reconstruction efforts that would have uh, occurred afterwards. We're seeing the helplessness, perhaps powerlessness of a mother and her children, but we're not seeing uh, what's happening outside of the image. We're not seeing um, we're not seeing that that local uh, local community members actually played an active role in the reconstruction efforts. We're getting a sense of um, the helplessness and dependency of survivors, rather than their resilience and agency, and how they actually played a, a very active role in the reconstruction and rehabilitation efforts afterwards. So, to come back to the, the power relationships at play, what we get from all of that is that um, as, Western, as a Western audience, we're really um, getting a, a, or perpetuating a kind of stereotypical notion of non-Western helplessness and need, and thus our, our, um, our, uh, the urgency of our assistance. I mean, another way that we could also look at this is from the perspective of the camera and the camera angle that we get. It's really interesting, right? It's like looking in from above or looking down from above, which indicates quite a lot about power relations in here, and I think it raises questions over, you know, like where's that photographer coming from? Um, you know, what role did the photographer play in depicting this image in this particular way? What does that replicate or perhaps generate in terms of an understanding of how we as the spectators relate to that image and perhaps to the idea of helpless victims in there? Yeah, you're absolutely exactly. right, yeah. And look, I think it's interesting. We just used three fairly simple methodological steps, and we learned incredibly much about both the image, what's in there, what we can see, but also about the politics around it, what that image says about the tsunami. A composition analysis helped us to really fine-tune our eyes, our senses, our emotions in some sense. Then a semiotic analysis helped us really crystallize the key symbols out of it, you know, symbol of death, symbol of mourning, the metaphor, as Emma said, about woman and child, what that means in terms of, you know, representing humanitarian crisis, and through discourse analysis, then the entire issue of power, what is in the picture, what is not, you know, all the stuff that's happening outside this image that is perhaps even more important than what we see.
but also what that means in terms of Westerners looking in, uh, in terms of power relationships between the North and the South, in terms of the politics of humanitarian crisis. So this is just a simple example, but, but a careful, careful analysis of an image can give us incredible insight about the politics of images. Thanks. I think this is a really powerful summary. And Emma and Roland, I find that even though it's a difficult image to look at, I've got a much better sense of the techniques I certainly need to use if I want to understand the meaning of an image. Thank you.